Somebody lift up your voice. Somebody give God praise. Come on now, give God praise. We bless you, Lord Jesus. My, 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 my. You know, you just kind of be crazy not, not to want to come to church today. Feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Man. I know, I know some folks are probably still in their pajamas and, uh, you know, praise God, but there ain't nothing like coming into the house of the Lord, feeling the presence of God. Amen. I think, I think there, there's a secular song that would probably, I'm not going to sing it, man. He, he, he got all excited. He was like, all right, let's go for it. Amen. <laughs> There's a secular song that would probably just fit perfect right there. And that is, there's nothing like the real thing, baby. Amen. And when it comes to church, there ain't nothing like the real thing coming into the house of the Lord. Somebody give God praise over that. Praise God. It is, it is so good to be here uh, this afternoon, to be able to feel the presence of the Lord, and uh, to find myself at Morning Star in the afternoon. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is always a distinct joy, honor, and privilege to be able to see uh, Bishop and First Lady, just love and appreciate them very much. Amen. They are great, great people of God. Amen. You are gifted to have a bishop in the house. Amen. Then, of course, it is, it's always a joy to be with uh, uh, my friend, Pastor uh, Lisa Raga and Lady Anna, amen. They're a beautiful couple, but at the same time, they're just, uh, uh, they're real people, you know. I like real people. I don't like fake people, amen. Fake, get on my nerves. If you're going to be fake, go be fake at Walmart, amen. Praise God. I like real people, and it's always... Uh, uh, great joy to be able to fellowship with them and every time we come we just pick up where we left off amen we don't have to go into like well how's things going you know any any addition to the family you know we don't have to go down that we just pick up where we left off and that's such a blessing amen and of course uh, always good to see Josh and Liana amen <laughs> And Blaze, the man, Blaze. I like your hairdo, man. That's that's a statement right there, all by itself. Hallelujah. That's a piece of art. Hallelujah. I know, cause I gotta blow dry my hair too. Amen. When I see that, I'm like, yeah, that dude's tapped into something. Amen. Praise God. You ready for the word? I want to invite you to open your Bibles, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. This morning I was just, uh, I was in prayer, in fact, from yesterday, day before yesterday, Friday night. Uh, hey, Friday was my anniversary, amen, with my wife. Praise God. 20. 27 years with the same lady. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. And uh, he gave me a good one. I don't know if, if, if it's that she's crazy or what it is, but 
we've been married now for 27 years, and it's just getting better and better and better. Amen. The Lord is good. Uh, but on Friday, I said to my wife, I said, I said, I'm, I'm praying that the Lord will give me a fresh word, a specific word for, amen, I was calling you Daystar, but then we corrected it yesterday, amen, <laughs> Morning Star, amen, TV station got excited, hallelujah, amen, but for Morning Star, and uh, yesterday I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I want something new. I want something fresh. And this morning I felt like the Lord began to direct my, my footsteps. And so bear with me. Hallelujah. Amen. If, um, if we stuttered, then just pray with me. Amen. Matthew 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I want to read it in the, um, also in the NIV. It says, and because the lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Most is more than half. Most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endureth to the end, he shall be saved. Amen. Uh, I want to I wanna preach today on hold on to the promises. Hold on to the promises. Whew. Now I'm going to put another title to it. Endure to the end. No, I'm going to throw another title in there. Don't give up. Don't give up. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You're just a, an amazing God. Powerful God. Lord, we are living in a time that we have never lived in before. And we need you more than ever. We need your strength. We need your power. We need your spirit, your guidance. We need your glory that moves and touches us. I pray by the power of your spirit, Lord, put the devil in his place. Let your name be glorified in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Now clap your hands to the Lord and give God the praise. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. It's interesting how um, traveling and going to different places have had a, uh, a closer than a bird's eye view of how the church is and the condition of the church. Because if I was only to be visiting one church, then I would only be able to tell you the condition of that one church. But because I have the opportunity to go from church to church, I see what is going on in the church world. And it's interesting that when the pandemic first hit, there was a bunch of people that were saying, praise God, God's getting the church out of the four walls. And for those that were excited about it, I was freaking out about it. Because for the 20% that was excited about it, 
I knew that there was an 80% that was in risk of danger. Because for them, their only connection with God is church. Amen. That was their only connection with God. I know, I know Morningstar is different than everybody else, but most people do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. They have a relationship with the church as a social gathering, but not a relationship with God. And you get church out of the scene and all of a sudden people don't know what to do because their only accountability to God and to Christian living is showing up to church on Sunday. I know you got quiet, but it's truth. Amen. And so you, you saw it. You saw it the first the first couple of weeks, the viewing online was high. I mean, people were excited because there were churches that were running 10 and they had 3,000 viewers. Amen. Just excited. Wow, we had 3,000 viewers. I wanted to verify just today. I wanted to verify. I wanted to see if my instinct is true and it was very much true that churches that would have 400 500 a thousand viewers when the pandemic first hit I wanted to see their condition today and so I began to look at the viewings and churches that had 300, 400, 500 viewers today had 25 and 30 and 40 viewers. And it was confirmed unto me what I have been gathering this whole time. And that is uh, that there is a about 60 to 70 percent of people that are no longer interested in getting back to church. I believe it. I believe it. Glory to God. Yes, and it's sad because the Bible has talked about the great falling away. But the Bible has also talked about if God is going to find faith on the earth when he is to return. And I believe that we are living those moments now. We are living those moments today where faith is fallen. Oh God. Hallelujah. Where, where, where the, the faith of many begin to wear out. And it is the Bible, as the Bible says, that it is the wearing of the saints. Where the enemy is coming and he's, and he's fighting against your very faith. Because he knows that your faith is powerful. And if he can take your faith away, he can take your victory away. But I come in the name of Jesus because I've got a mandate from heaven and that is for your faith to be strengthened in this place today. Somebody give God praise. So what is different? We have... We are going through a pandemic. What is different from us than from other generations that went through greater things than what we are going through right now? Greater things, harder things than what we are going through right now. I'm talking about generations that went through World War I, World War II, Vietnam, the Korean War. I'm talking about generations that went through the Black Death virus. 
block death disease where 75 to 200 million people died of that. I'm talking about the ones that, that suffered through the flu of 1918 where 35 million were killed with that flu. Pandemic of 1968 where that killed a million people. The Asian flu in uh, 56 to 58 that killed 2 million people. What is the difference in between that generation and this generation? Is that that generation ran to the church house and this generation is running to Facebook. Oh God, somebody clap your hands to the Lord. That generation found themselves on their faces before God, calling on the mercy of God, calling on the power of God. This generation is blaming God for everything. Oh, Lord, some of you don't want to preach with me, but I'm going to preach this until I get a breakthrough in the house because somebody's faith is going to be established in this place today. Somebody give God praise right now. So we are facing right now in the church a spiritual faith pandemic. It is a dying of faith. Faith is being attacked more fierce than ever before. What it is is, it's this, it is putting in question the word of God, the promises of God. What God has established in his word as truth. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Somebody give God praise right now. Satan from the very beginning, the first sights of him in the Bible we see him planting the seeds of doubt in Eve. He begins to plant the seeds of doubt with this simple question. He says, hath God said? Hath God said? In other words, did God really say this? Did God really speak this? That's the first thing that he comes on the scene of saying, has God said? Did God really speak? And that's one of the things that people are battling in their life right now. Is God really speaking? Or did I emotionally Drew, drew something from myself. Is God really speaking? Did God really speak? Did he speak to me? See, the human emotion, it, 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 when it gets involved, a lot of times uh, it will compromise things that we will interpret it as the Lord said when it was our wishful thinking. And so as humans and, and uh, as, uh, as a preacher, I have the tendency of always running through my brain what I declared and what I prophesied to run it through the filters and make sure that it was not uh, my emotions that got a hold of me, uh, but it was thus saith the spirit of the Lord. So therefore, it is okay for me as an individual to question if I heard from God. 
But it is different when Satan comes and questions if you heard from God. Because his intention is to divide you from God, is to separate you from God, is for you to question the very word of God. But the devil is a liar. Somebody better clap their hands like they mean it in this house. Give me a little volume if you can. When the devil comes and asks, the root is always the same. It's to bring doubt in your mind. It's to bring questioning in your mind. Because doubt, when it settles down in your life, doubt is the secret killer of faith. I'm telling you, I'm charged up right now. I ain't taking no prisoners. Uh, we're coming out with both barrels and we're shooting. Uh, because the Lord is putting the devil on display. Uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, does anybody believe that uh, in this place today? Uh, Hallelujah. I want you to understand this. Basic biblical truths are under an assault from the pit of hell. Amen. They're under an assault from the pit of hell. There is that, that silent killer of doubt that the enemy wants to put in every Christian, every child of God to believe that God don't got power, that God done abandoned us. I want you to know something. He's still seated on his throne. All power is in his hand. Somebody give a roaring praise in the house of the Lord. Somebody's going to have a breakthrough in this house. See, what the devil does is he tries to, uh, to coerce people to abandon the biblical truths. Amen. And distort it with the belief of the culture that we are living in to the point that we believe the culture more than the Bible. But the Bible has not failed. The word of God has not failed. What it says it does, it does. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. Somebody ought to give God praise. Oh Lord, I feel breakthrough in the house. Somebody ought to give God praise. Tell your neighbors, say there's, there's power in the word. See, see, I, I, I want you to note something that that, that Jesus' first encounter with Satan was the similar encounter that Eve had with Satan. Amen. And everybody said, right, praise God. That is, man, you guys are great. I don't even have to preach this right now. You just said, right, amen, that's right, hallelujah. Yep, you got it, amen. Praise God. When Jesus was baptized, watch this, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. After being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descend as a dove and coming upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That was the voice 
That was the declaration. This is my son. Who it got quiet? This is my son. Now, now, now we go to from the baptism in chapter 3 to the temptation in chapter 4. Where everybody talks about the three temptations that Jesus had, but hardly ever mention the fourth temptation. The three temptations was the lust of eyes, the lust of the flesh, the, the simple pride of life. Where he begins to talk to Jesus and, and, and begins to try to convince Jesus. But there is a fourth temptation that is the most, uh, 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 I would say, deadly attack against Jesus. And that is when he begins to question his identity. Ushara he begins to question his identity. Satan tries to convince Jesus that the only way to prove that what he heard from the voice was true was to demonstrate miracles. Oh, this is good all by itself. Amen. Y'all hang in there. Buckle your seatbelts. And after a while, I'll tell you to unbuckle. Amen. Watch this. Lord have mercy help me Jesus and so and so we must understand that God's word is true even if there's miracles or there are no miracles his word is still true whether God answers my prayer or never answers my prayer the word of God is still true whether he comes through or he never comes through, the word of God is still true. Does anybody believe that in this place today? See, see, religious faith is head faith. Head faith is cheapened by things. It is cheapened by things. It is, it is dependent on what you get from God. And so therefore you view God as Santa Claus. And you got that little attitude of give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And, and you shout when you're in your I want it now mode. Amen. And some folks in this place you can shout on a want it now praise. Amen. But that's a cheap faith. That's not a genuine faith. That's a faith of tantrums. Uh, where the boy is in Walmart saying, I want a candy, I want it. And the mama says, no. He starts crying. Because his value uh, is dependent uh, on the candy that he can get out of his mama. Oh God, that's good all by itself. It's like the wife that has to hear the man tell her every 10 minutes, I love you. But when you got a relationship, you can be all the way across the world and still know he loves me. She loves me. And that's faith relationship with God where even though he don't bless me yet will I praise him oh God somebody get a somebody give a praise right now can I preach this today can I preach this today so, and so it's, it's according to things, but I love what Job said. Job said, even though he slay me, oh, Sharabakaya, yet will I praise him, yet will I serve him. 
I like another translation that says, even though he cut me up in a thousand pieces, each piece will still give God the praise. I got to understand my life is better in his hands than in my hands. Somebody give God praise right now. He, he knows the end from the beginning. He says, for I, I know the plans I have for you. But if he doesn't answer us, then we question if he loves us. If he does not respond, then it must be that he's not real. And my faith should be deeper than that. That even though I don't see it, he's working. Even though I don't feel him, he's still there. <sighs> Even though I don't see him, he's still there. And so Satan comes to put questioning in the mind of Jesus and he ends up saying to Jesus after in verse 2 uh, it says after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights uh, he then came became hungry and the tempter came and said to him if you are the son of God <laughs> if you are the son of God. Twice he said, if you are the son of God. He says, if you are the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Most people would be like, yeah, because the Lord knows I'm hungry. Hey Amen. I've been fasting all this time. I deserve nice hot baked bread because I've been obedient up to this point. I deserve this. Yes, Lord, if I'm your son or your daughter, turn these rocks into bread. It must be that I'm not because it didn't happen. Oh, it's quiet. I love it. I love it. And so we question. We question God's word. We begin to doubt his word. I even had a pastor ask me a few months ago. Watch this. Ask me a few months ago. He said, he said, Brother Dross, evangelists are dying and preachers are dying and prophets are dying. And, and he started going. He said, is this bigger than God? Does the Bible not say that it rains on the just and the unjust? Harabosiah. Does the Bible not say that many are the afflictions? Hallelujah. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Oh, does the Bible not say that, lo, oh, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world? Yes, yes, the Bible says that. But if the enemy can plant doubt in your mind, when, when 
did the devil come after Jesus? When did he put in question the word? It was practically immediately after he had received the word. Why? Because the devil knows that if that seed of the word begins to make roots, it will grow a forest of faith inside of you so he'll come and try to pluck it out of you before it can even grow any roots but the devil is a liar somebody's faith is going to another level in this place today somebody give god praise right now I, I, I want to go on, but will you lift your hands right there? I feel the glory. I feel the glory of God. I'm, I'm going to go on, but... Father, even though you never bless me again, I serve you. Oh, I feel the glory. Watch, 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 watch. Glory to God. He, he begins to question. He runs in. He says, I got to get this. I got to get it before, before it begins to grow roots. It's critical. I have seen it many times. I have seen it so many times. I... I, I pastored this lady that she had, I believe they call it rheumatoid arthritis. She was 33 years old. She was bent over, totally physically disabled. And she'd walk. She didn't have a wheelchair, but she'd walk. And it was just, just little steps at a time. And she'd have to stop because she had so much pain. In her body and and I remember we had a service where it was powerful the power of God came upon her and, and all of a sudden I saw when she rose up straightened out in her back her hands straightened out her head straightened out and she began to run and ran 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 until she exhausted herself and she fell in the altar and she was weeping and crying and she was sweated and rejoicing and then got back up and ran and ran and ran glory to god but as she was walking out hey man with with her cane in hand as she was walking out one of the preachers said to her did you really get killed And I saw it with my own eyes as she said, I, I, I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. I, I believe I got healed. And she began to walk out the same way that she had walked in. Because the enemy came at the right time to steal that word to steal that faith so that it would not get roots because the moment it starts getting roots the devil know he can't get it out of you so he comes and the Bible says that the sower was sowing seed. Who shall tell ya? He was sowing seed and some fell by the wayside. And the Bible says that the fowls came from the sky and they grabbed the seed and they ate the seed so that it would not produce fruit, would not be able to grow. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place so strong. Hallelujah. This is not a political thing that we're going through. Even though, yeah, it looks like a lot of stuff is. And thank you, Arizona, for messing it up. Amen. But it's... 
Praise God. Man, Arizona's Florida now, man. Praise God. Amen. Watch this. It's an attack on your faith. It's to wear out the saints of the Most High. Who I feel the Holy Ghost. See, see, I, I've got a mandate from God. My mandate is to, to re-encourage the faith of the church of the Lord. The same way that the, the disciples, when, when Jesus was sacrificed, when he sacrificed, when he died on the cross and rose the third day, what happened to the disciples? Peter went back to his old life in three days. That's how powerful his faith was that he flopped out. Went back fishing. The disciples were hiding. They were afraid. They were afraid because people might kill them. So they were hiding. They were afraid. And so Jesus comes back into the scene. And now he even has to demonstrate. Look, put your hands in my wounds and verify that it is I that is with you. But then he started to reconstruct the faith of his disciples because he would show up when they didn't expect it. And he'd disappear. And every time he'd show up, he'd talk about what they were talking about so that they would know that even though we didn't see him, he was right here with us. And so what God has been doing is he's been working this time the faith of the church to be able to know that God is still in control. Oh, you got to hear this, baby. God's in control. If you put your hope in the government and you put your hope in the stimulus, uh, you're out of whack, baby. Uh, you don't got it. Uh, but I prefer to put my hope in the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Uh, it does not come from the government. It comes from heaven above. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house of the Lord. So what, what will happen, what will happen is he'll come and he'll take that seed of faith. Amen. And he'll plant a seed of doubt. And a seed of doubt is always rooted in lies. Oh, that's good all by itself. Seed of doubt is always rooted in lies. That's why if you can literally grab a married couple and you can sit them down and you can talk to them for them to be totally and completely honest they will realize that their struggles came by seed of lies and not realities. Because if the enemy can make you believe a lie, then he knows that that will attach you to the lie. And now you become a prisoner of that lie. Purabakataya. That's why people are freaking out uh, because they're like, I, I heard one person that said, everybody's dying. I said, that's not true. I said, I'm not dead. Hey Amen. If everybody was dying, everybody would be dead now. Not true. Everybody's not dying. I've said it several times on social media. Will the ones that got for Corona and survived please stand up? Please say I made it. I went through the fire and I made it. I came out on the other side. I didn't die. I'm alive. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? 
Who am I preaching to in this place? I said, who am I preaching to in this place? But the moment, the moment, the moment you begin to believe a lie, it will paralyze you. It will paralyze you. Minister, what was that scripture you gave me yesterday? It was powerful. 2318, quote it. Amen. Something about noise of fear. Those have fallen in the pit. Those that run from the noise of fear have fallen in the pit. Oh, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. All the enemies had to do is make some noise and people start freaking out and thinking that this is the end of humanity. The devil is a liar because life and death is in the power of our God. He gives life and he gives death. It is not the pit of hell. It's not sickness that kills you. It is God that's the giver of life. Somebody ought to give God praise because if you're breathing it's God saying live every time you're breathing it's God saying live let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord somebody ought to give God praise right now I don't hear you give him praise Somebody for just three seconds ought to lower their mask and shout as loud as you can. You ought to let the devil know I've got to shout up in this place. I've got to shout up in this place. I've got to shout up in this place. Oh, I feel the glory of the Lord. I feel the glory of the Lord. I said, I feel the glory of the Lord. Somebody give God a crazy praise right now. Uh, watch, 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 watch. Usha. Watch, watch, watch. I was in a service. We had people come out of wheelchairs and, and God was healing and touching and doing miracles all over the place. And he's a miracle worker. He's a, he's a miracle worker. Hey Amen. There is no sickness he cannot heal. There is nothing that is more powerful than the power of our God. Does anybody believe that in this place? He's a miracle worker. And I preached, I, I wore myself out, amen. I preached, I had preached three times that day. I preached and wore myself out that last service. Just people healed and, and I mean, it was just powerful. My dad, my, my dad, he always calls me, but, but, but before that, I went back home that night on a Sunday night. I, very few times do I get to go back home on Sunday night. So I went back home Sunday night and when I was walking into my room, all of a sudden a pain shot up into my leg to the point that I, I became instantly debilitated and I almost fell to the ground. My wife saw it and, and she said, baby, what, what's okay? What's wrong? And I said, I, I, I don't know. I said, I've got this pain that just shot in my leg. And so she kind of helped me out to get up on the bed and and I pulled up my pants and my leg was, was red right there, just red. And so we called the doctor and the doctor began to ask questions. And 
came to the conclusion that I had a blood clot. And, uh, and so, <clears throat> well, you know, blood clots are associated with you know what, amen. And so my wife grabs keys and she's like, well, we better go to the hospital. I said, uh-uh. I said, I ain't, no, uh-uh. I'm different. You got to pray for me. I'm different. I'm very different. I grew up in a different atmosphere. I grew up in Latin America. And you couldn't just run to a doctor. Now, I'm different. It doesn't mean you do this. Amen. Because if your faith ain't there, don't do it. Don't mess with it. Amen. Don't mess with it. I'm just being honest. I've, God's called me to do several fasts. I've done, I've done many fasts. I've done 15, 20 30 and 41 days of fast where all I have is coffee because the Lord and I, we got an agreement about coffee. Amen. <laughs> We're like that. Amen. <laughs> He's growing me some super beans up there in heaven right now. Coffee. Amen. <laughs> Any church that has a coffee shop in the church is a good church. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And so, <laughs> amen. And so, but then I'll have people that will come and they'll say to me, Brother Dross, I'd like to do a long fast. And I'll tell them, if the Lord didn't tell you, you better not do it. Right. Don't just do it to lose weight because the devil will mess with you. Right. Will mess with your brain. He'll mess with you. And so, and so I'm different. I'm different. Whenever sickness has come on my body, I don't look at it as an end. I look at it as a beginning. Because in that moment, I become a canvas for a miracle. See, most people look at it as, I'm going to die. I don't care if I die, because to die is gain. Amen. And so when that pain hit me, my wife's like, let's go. I'm like, no, no, no. I said, babe, the Lord's going to use this to take my faith to another level. So she comes and she brings me pills because I was in pain. I said, no, babe, I don't need the pills. The Lord's going to use this. Should have taken the pills because I couldn't sleep all night. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't tell the people out there on YouTube, amen. I just, I just put it right here. Oh, wait, we are on YouTube, amen. <laughs> and so I, I, I get up, I get my coffee, and I've got my leg up in the air like that, and my dad calls me. Oh, my dad. Oh, man. He'd call me every Monday, and we'd talk about what happened on Sunday. And... Uh, so he calls me that day. He says, son, how's it going? I said, man, that's great. I had a person come out of a wheelchair. And God doing healings all over the place and people getting the Holy Ghost. I said, it's great. My dad said, son, it's just amazing to see how God's using you to lift up the faith of the people in the midst of sickness. And, and I said, God's good, dad. God's good. He was about to hang up. And I said, hey, dad. He said, yeah. I said, you know, here we're talking about faith and this whole time I've had my leg up in the air. I said, because I've got a blood clot in my leg. He said, son, right now? I said, yeah. I said, I'm in pain right now. He said, well, we were talking. You've been in pain this whole time. I said, yeah. He said, I couldn't have told you. Wouldn't have been able to tell. I said, yeah, I know. He said, well, son, let's pray about it. I said, okay. He said, I want you to put your hand on, on your leg. I said, okay. My dad was down in Mexico City. I'm over in Dallas, Texas. My dad begins to pray, and he starts crying on the phone. And I've never in my life heard my dad cry before. But he began to cry. And he said like this. He said, God, he said, I pray. Watch this. I didn't tell my dad anything. He said, God, I pray 
that you'll use this to take my son's faith to another level. He said, Lord, you have used him to see miracles all over the place. Now it's time for you to do a miracle in his body. He said, in Jesus' name, heal his body. The pain instantly, instantly left. The swellness, the redness left within a few minutes. It was gone, and I have never battled with that ever again. You know what happened, Bishop? The enemy came to try to take that seed. Because I saw faith in action. And he came to try to take that seed and start wanting to plant doubt. The Lord said, no, that seed's going to take root. I come in the name of Jesus. Because there are some folks in this place you've lost hope. Your faith has been battered. It's been beaten. hanging in there. You didn't know that today there was going to be a preacher. Different setting for the church. Amen. They kept it secret. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. But God knew. And he brought you today and those that are watching right now that you're home and you're full of fear. Sickness is not in the house of God. Healing is in the house of the Lord. Woo. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the loving touch of God right now. God's reaching. It's his love. His love is reaching. We're going to have a move of God in this place. There's going to be a powerful move of God in this place. But the Lord has sent me to pray for your faith. That it'll be strengthened. That it will not be distorted by the voices of this world but that will be held strong by the word of God. God's word does not fail. I said God's word does not fail. I want you to stand all over this place. I feel to the glory of God. Father, I have preached your word. been a powerful word, a rhema word, fresh word from heaven. Lord, you know the state of every individual that's in this place. You know where everybody's at. There are those that are holding on by just a little nail I don't I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna make it or not but God you brought them today you allowed them to tune in today there are those Lord that feel empty on the inside because they've been hit from one side the other side they feel empty on the inside. I pray for faith. Be strengthened in this place. 
I pray God that people will begin to pick up be strengthened in their soul your word is true your word never fails and you are true to your word I declare your word in this place today let faith arise let faith arise let faith arise let every lie of the enemy be broken by the power of the name of Jesus your word says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free your word has been true this morning it's been spoken Lord, when we hold on to truth, it breaks the chains of doubt and fear. In the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to just talk to God right there. I feel, I feel the love of God reaching somebody. It's his love right now. He's reaching you. He's reaching. He's reaching. There you go. There you go. You're responding to that. I feel life coming into somebody right now. Life is coming into somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, just begin to breathe that presence of the Lord right now. All over this place, will you lift even your face towards heaven? In the name of Jesus, lift your face towards heaven. In the name of Jesus, his glory is in this place. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I feel the glory of the Lord. Your faith is going to another level right now. Your faith is going to another level right now. Begin to declare. But then begin to declare what you believe in God. Begin to let him know, Lord, I believe in you. I have my faith in you. I, I have my trust in you, God. I know that you hold me in your hands. I know that you hold me, God. I know, God, you're with me. Somebody begin to lift that up. I command fear to leave this place. I bind fear by the power of the name of Jesus. I take authority over fear. I take authority over fear now in the name of Jesus. I bind it in Jesus' name. Command it to leave your mind, to leave your household. I declare freedom in your life. I declare freedom in your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody got to lift up their voice right now. Somebody lift up your voice. So great. Can you declare the greatness of God?